how did we get here? From here. Hello YouTube, my name is Courtney and this is Courtney and Books. particularly confusing subject. It's no secret that romance books have evolved well beyond what they used to be. With internet and current resources making it so easy for people to self-publish and promote their own work, romance has become something quite interesting. I myself have been known to indulge in some pretty strange books, which I never would have been able to experience were it not for the ease of publishing your own works these days. And being a self-published author myself, I think it is amazing that you can write to your heart's delight and still find your crowd. While the old days were filled with these amazing and wonderfully classic tales of highlanders and lords and knights and princesses, today we find books delving into some truly twisted and dare I say tasty avenues. We have tentacles, we have aliens, we have monsters, we have dark romance, we have taboo, omegaverse and ghosts, fairies, not these fairies, these fairies, vampires, werewolves, dragons, gods, demons, angels, and centaurs. And yes, a very popular genre or subgenre in this vast spread of obscure romance is orc romance. At this point, I want really badly to assume that my watches are at least a little bit familiar with romance books in all their forms. But if you are not, orc romance is indeed a popular genre of romance and erotica. If you're a fan of size difference, lots of fluids, tusks, huge muscles, and a lot of toucher and die elements, then maybe give orc romance a try. My first introduction was The Maiden and the Orc by the lovely Finley Fenn. And at the time I had no idea that orc romance even existed in books, because to me, orcs look like this. Which brings me back to the beginning. Where did orcs originate? Well, this was harder than I thought to get to the bottom of. My first ever experience with orcs was the stories told by J.R.R. Tolkien and the Lord of the Rings series. Now, I only read these books once when I was in high school, which was many, many years ago. So please don't at me if anything I say isn't 100% accurate or if I botched the pronunciation of something. I also haven't seen the movies in like 10 years. When I decided to dive down this little rabbit hole, I was actually very surprised that the rabbit hole was not very deep. See, I thought orcs originated somewhere long before Tolkien tossed them into Middle-earth, but alas, I was wrong. Or at least evidence saying they did was slim to none. Tolkien did state that he adopted the word orc from Old English literature, mainly the epic poem Beowulf. The poem was produced somewhere between 975 and 1025 AD, and since the author is unknown, scholars just sort of refer to the author as the Beowulf poet. The actual story takes place in pagan Scandinavia in the 6th century and follows the epic journeys of the hero called Beowulf. In Beowulf, there is a reference to the Orkneus. Orkneus. Orkney. Or something. I, I, I actually don't know. It's something like that. Which was a tribe belonging to the descendants of Cain. The meaning of the word is still sort of a mystery, but roughly translated, people have thought it to mean demon corpses, which could perhaps mean that they were the monstrous products of necromancy. So basically they were like zombies. Jump forward to 1937, when The Hobbit was introduced to the world. Although at the time I believe that orcs were still being referred to as goblins, it wasn't until the Lord of the Rings trilogy that the word orc was used in that universe. Orcs were human-like and varied in sizes. They were filthy, they were ugly, and they had a taste for human flesh. Later, a new breed of orc emerged called the Urukai. They were larger, they were more powerful, and were not afraid of the light like their predecessors were. Mm, yes, I can see how this would fit perfectly into a romance novel. I digress. I have learned that anything can become sexy in this new age of anything goes romance. Let's jump forward in time again to something I'm a little bit more familiar with, something a little bit more palatable in my opinion, and that is World of Warcraft. World of Warcraft is a popular MMORPG game that was developed and released for the first time in 2004 as Warcraft. 
Since then, it has evolved to be the most popular MMORPG game out there, with millions of players worldwide experiencing the world together. I happen to be one of them. I love it. Wait, are you alive? <laughs> yeah, I don't know what right. happened. Wait, how are you full health? Don't ask questions. The light blessed me. There is thousands and thousands of years of history attached to the World of Warcraft universe, and a very large part of that history revolves around orcs. Okay, okay. I can maybe get behind these orcs. Orcs are a very powerful race originally from the world of Draenor. Before being corrupted by a demon lord, they were a very primitive clan-based shamanistic race. After their corruption, they formed the Horde, and they became bloodthirsty warmongers. The corruption also turned a lot of the orcs typically brown skin green. While a few orcs escaped corruption, most fell victim to it and became a very powerful race of warriors set on conquering other worlds. While there are plenty of stand-up heroes in the Horde, like this guy. Oh no, that's my daddy. His daddy. This, that's his father. This is Thrall. He is the epitome of good in the World of Warcraft universe. After escaping slavery where he was constantly forced to participate in gladiator fights and beaten and abused by humans who they were at war with, are at war with the Horde and the Alliance are always at war. That is just a thing. He eventually becomes war chief and starts the long and tedious process of trying to show his people that there is a better way and also begins to adopt his people's old practice of shamanism. In the world of Warcraft, unlike Middle-earth, orcs are extremely redeemable. And we almost had ourselves a friends to lovers romance story when Thrall goes back to where he was enslaved to try and free his only friend, a human girl who was the only person to show him kindness while he was growing up. It ended very, very badly and we can all wish it went differently. Anyways, these are not the same. But we can at least see how the evolution of orcs in literature throughout the decades could have led to this. Now I did a little survey on Instagram a while back when I first thought about doing this video, asking people who I knew read a lot of orc romance why they loved it so much. Seeing as I'm not really the right person to ask because I don't read a lot of it, I have yet to find an orc romance that truly vibes with me and doesn't end up as just another it was okay book on my long list of books that I've read. But I know there are a lot of diehard orc romance fans out there and I wanted to know. See, every time I have picked up an orc romance, they always share at least two things. Size difference and an outrageous amount of fluids books are kink based. So in that sense, I think I completely understand why women enjoy these books so much. We all like the idea of being picked up like we weigh nothing no matter what size or height or weight we are. We like the idea of being told we're beautiful and dainty no matter what we look like. And above all, we like the idea of being worshipped. Books are a separation from reality and if it makes you feel great to read about a giant green orc who wants nothing more than to love on their mates, I think that's amazing. I mean, I wouldn't say no to daddy. Duratan. Crap. Anyways, that concludes my class today. But before you go, here are three of my orc romance book recommendations. Holy shit, I look like an alien. You can see my ring light like right in my right in my glasses. We're just gonna take those right off and pretend I never put them on. The first book on my list is called Gentling the Beast by L.V. Lane. And it is one of those books that I mentioned where the orc is not a looker whatsoever. Our orc is actually referred to as ugly on more than one occasion by all characters, including the main character, Jasmine. The book starts out where orcs who are, who I believe are called the Blighton in this, in this book, basically attack Jasmine's town and take her prisoner. There is a war going on. Everybody knows that everybody's experienced it. And she is taken prisoner and brought to some sort of a camp Eventually she is moved to a different camp and in that camp she meets Doug. Yes, his name is Doug. No, not that Doug. This Doug. He is mute. Unlike the other orcs who are green, I believe in this book, I can't completely remember if they're green or some other color, but he is white. Sort of like an albino, but not really because I'm pretty sure he has black hair, but he is white and that is because he is half alpha shifter. So he is, he is half shifter and half orc. I don't remember why he cannot talk, but he cannot talk. So the way they communicate is not really through verbal communication most of the time, which I thought was cute. 
He is also mutilated in certain areas that you would need if you were to pleasure a woman. Not that his his um, equipment doesn't work, but he's very self-conscious about it because of the, the torture and the torment that he went through from somebody who from somebody very bad. The moment he sees Jasmine, he is consumed by this protective instinct and kind of swears to protect her through the entire book, even if silently or off to the side. She sees him. She's very scared of him at first, but one of the other women in this camp tells her to survive. Your best bet is to find an orc and to mate him so that you are offered the protection that he would protect you as his mate. So she decides that he's going to pursue, she's going to pursue this guy after he rescues her from a human guard that is advancing on her in very forceful ways. So the book kind of continues where she is trying to pursue a relationship with him and he's a little bit standoffish because of his insecurities with his body and their relationship ends up being extremely cute and I actually really enjoyed it. It's definitely a cinnamon roll hero, somebody that is willing to do a lot to protect his woman and I just thought it was adorable. The next one that I read is her orc protector and at the time that I read it I did not know it was number four in the series but lucky for me you do not have to read the series all together. I'm pretty sure all the books are standalones. So this is number four in the Black Bear Clan by Zoe Ashwood. It starts out with a woman who is a healer in her town and she is accused of course of witchcraft and she is basically sentenced to death by being left in the woods. They do a few things to her uh, that would make it very difficult for her to survive but she ends up surviving and our orc man catches wind of her and he decides he's going to rescue her. So he rescues her and he ends up finding out that she is his fated mate and in this situation yes there are fated mates. So he just wants nothing more to take care of her and he takes her back to his mountain home which is basically like this big cave system and they build their relationship together and again as in a lot of like orc romance books that I've read it was very sweet he was very nurturing he was there are some things where she had to coddle him at some time at points because he's got some past traumas that he's dealing with and needed somebody very gentle to help him through them the next one that I read is Bound to an Orc, which is the first in the Blood Debt series by Erin Rookwood. This features Elodie, who is the rightful queen, but she was chased from her kingdom at some point and is traveling back to reclaim her throne. But in doing so, she and her party of of basically like bodyguards and advisors go through orc territory and while they're going through orc territory they are captured by orcs or technically they are rescued by orcs because they are attacked by wraiths and they are rescued by a band of orcs and one of these orcs stands between Elodie and an attacker and sheds blood for her and therefore decides he's going to claim what is called a blood debt. The orc basically says I am not giving her back to you until she fulfills her blood debt to me so I get her for a month and you all have to skedaddle and get out of my get out of my territory while I do whatever I want with this woman for a month. Sounds bad and of course Elodie thinks it's bad because orcs to her are these murderous brutes that everyone avoids and she didn't even expect to survive in the first place let alone have this guy keep her prisoner and keep her alive for a month. So she has the worst suspicions about him. She thinks the worst. She thinks that she is going to be used in ways that are unbefitting of a lady and she is just dreading what is to come. Turns out that he just wants her to break a curse. Now without getting into the rest of the book it is basically about their relationship and how it develops and I again thought it was really cute and I actually think it was my favorite on this list of orc romance books. So if you are somebody that is wanting to delve into orc romance and you don't know where to start I think these are really good places to start. They are a bit tamer when it comes to orc romance. There aren't quite as many fluids. <laughs> and uh, the guys are just really really sweet and yeah. That is it for this video. Like this video, share this video. If you are not subscribed, subscribe below. I am trying to get to 600 subscribers and unlike everything else that I think I need to do alone, I cannot do this without you guys. If you have any orc romance recommendations that you think I might like, put them in the comments. 
Thank you for watching. Happy reading. And until next time, bye.